Philakia. Continuing. Um, well, it's not continuing. I'm gonna actually um um stop there and um go into um the Beast Tech um book. Continue where I left off. I think I stopped at the Human Genome Project. It might be said that the HGP actually began on December 9th, 1984, when a group, I've read all this, 17, um, uh, yeah, then it said, reinvent nature and ourselves. He's a dedicated vegan entrepreneur. Uh, Slovakia. Uh, synthetic biology company. Assuming, yeah, then it went into the Neanderthal. Assuming he wanted to uh, revive a Neanderthal. Assuming a human female volunteer to be the surrogate mother. Initially, the alter group had discussed finding a repeatable and affordable means to qualify mutations within the Hiroshima offspring. Two years later, in 1986, Mendelssohn joined several others from Alta as well as panel chairs Arno Maltosi of the Center for Inherited Disease to present a report called Office of Technology Assessment. Technologies for Detecting Heritable Mutations in Human Beings. This report had followed a meeting of leading molecular biologists, biologists in the spring of that year organized by James Watson, yes, that's Watson, and held at Cold Spring Harbor Laboratory. Cold Spring, if you remember your eugenics history, was the site for the eugenics records office. And when you go into that whole history of the eugenics office, you know, that was all funded by Rockefeller. So, you know, this has all been a plan of the elite, you know. And people say that the, I mean, when you really research this shit and find out that, like, uh, the elite, you know, you got certain families and certain people that own all the media, own all the drug companies, own just certain, all a certain shit. How could you not see, <laughs> you know, then you got people say, oh, that's, these people are crazy. It's not a group of people ruling the world, you know what I mean? Like, so, like I said, at the end of the day, that's what I say, this eugenics shit, and, and, and well, the, the, the book says it for itself, this eugenics and, and, and this transhumanism is all just the same rehash of the same old ideas. Are you beginning to get a nagging twitch at the back of your neck? Me too. By 1986, Salakia 87, promotion of a planned genomic sequencing event kicked off with an article in the nation's most prominent newspaper, the New York Times, titled The Genome Project. It would be the biggest, costliest, most provocative biomedical research project in history, and the United States must embark on it immediately. That was how Walter Gilbert, Nobel Prize winning biology professor at Harvard University, Heard the Genome Project described at scientific meetings all through 1985 and 1986. The undertaking, which would revel the precise biochemical makeup of the entire genetic material of genome of a human being, would, he heard, revolutionize medicine. It would answer the Japanese challenge in biotechnology. It would grant insight into human biology previously held only by the Yahawa. And that's Esau, you know, uh, once again, what's that Daniel's, uh, is that Daniel Ezekiel? I think it's Ezekiel. You know, at the end of the day, the Most High allowed this devil to get that knowledge, but it'll be to his destruction. But that's him trying to be as the Most High. I don't know Behold, thou art wiser than Daniel. There is no secret that they can hide from thee. So, at the end of the day, you not you'll be you probably won't be surprised. I wouldn't be surprised. Like before, I came into the truth. I was already like into um, you know searching stuff out. Like I said, that's the only way I could phrase it. Like I knew about the Iron Man suit, the exoskeletons before I even got into the truth. You know, what I'm saying I took my horn is just that's I guess one of the gifts that the Most High gave me. You know what I mean? I've always to, you know, knowledge and searching out knowledge. So, you know, I knew about that beforehand. That's why when, like I said, when Obama was, uh, you probably could go look that up, when Obama made that statement about, like, we got Iron Man, and everybody laughed at it because, you know, people assume, you know, uh, 
Obama was charismatic. You know, I I will admit he's way more charismatic than uh, Donald Trump. But Donald Trump is so fucking arrogant. You know what I mean? Like he don't he he feels he doesn't need charisma. Take the time. I mean, like that that uh, interview they did where he said women love me. I mean, my my dude. Well, he's not my dude. It's a two third guy that I know from the world. Uh, you know, in certain situations because. You know, that's the balance. I mean, I try to stay around brothers all the time, but you know you're going to be around two-thirds as well. You know, I mean, he used to make this statement. He was like, you know, because at the end of the day, you know, Jake is silly and, and ignorant. At the same, like, Jake, he laughing at it, but at the same time, he kind of worried now that they didn't fuck with these these steps. But, you know, it, it's going to take for Jake to get punched in the face. That's what Jake really wake up to. But he, I mean, not to digress, he was saying how, uh, you know, Donald Trump, which is like, so you can look it up. He said, you know, women love me. He said, all I do is kiss him on the cheek and grab him the pussy. Now, this is this man's mindset. So he doesn't necessarily feel he has to be charismatic. You know, Obama is that man that, you know, he was groomed in that position, the perfect Manchurian candidate. You know, and I remember when I first heard of you, you know, that's the immediately what I thought of, like the Manchurian candidate. You know what I mean? Like, because you know, it's like they brought this guy out of nowhere, but they really didn't. They had groomed him for this. But, you know, I will say this, Obama was, is, was a lot more charismatic. You know, like he would have you perplexed or could make you smile, or, you know what I mean? You know, he, he, he was a lot slyer and smoother than Donald Trump. But at the end of the day, uh, he made the statement that, you know, we got Iron Man and everybody laughed at it, but he literally told truth. He said, no, I'm serious. You know what I mean? And, you know, uh you. After falling over several scientists who attended the Alta meet, the NYT article continues. Today, a new consensus is emerging. Robert Cook Deegan, an analyst at the Office of Technology Assessment, OTA, a congressional agency, reports that of late, NIH has been taken to DOE. There is more cooperation than friction. A bill has been introduced to Congress by Senator Pete Missy of New Mexico to create a government consortium to map and sequence the genome. Other bills are in the offing. Few doubt that the Gino project is sub four will eventually get underway. And this book is old. I forgot what year. I know it's like probably within the last five years. Five to ten years, I say like that, because I'm not about to go and look up the exact date. But the thing is, I know for a fact they've already mapped out the Gino project. You know, they supposedly discovered every gene in the body. You know what I mean? Because I that was years ago when they actually finished it, because of actually... I want to say that was like, uh, like early two thousand. You know, because uh, I was actually uh, at a at, 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 at Applebee's restaurant. I was working at Applebee's. You know what I mean? Uh, I probably it was about. I want to say maybe like within ten, fifteen years ago. Uh, Nobel laureate Walter Gilbert thought you may not know it, Salaki, so like though you may not know it partnered with George Church in the study of mouse and yeast genetic elements. Gilbert also co-founded the company Biogene, now Biogene Indec, in 1978. Wally Gilbert may not be an involved transhumanist, but he does spend a lot of time with Church, so one wonders if he might not be influenced by such proximity. So like in such proximity, Church is an evangelist when it comes to transhumanist dogma. Perhaps it's discussed over a nice plate of organic sprouts. With the NYT and other media mongols on board and a bill before Congress, it didn't take long for the idea of a J race to take hold. In 1989, before leaving office, President Ronald Reagan approved the plans for a U.S.-led Geno project and placed it in his 1988 budget. And when you go into the whole, like, looking into Reagan, uh, in, uh, not industry, but uh, his administration, Reagan set the bar and did, started off a lot of the shit that we're see it today, you know what I mean, just real talk, you know, just like Clinton started a lot of like with the NAFTA shit and all that, you know what I mean, and that's why you got these companies that, that took all they fucking, you know, that's why they, all the presidents helped bring this place to where it is now, and it's beautiful how the most I did it. Um, in May 1990, the Official proposal went to Capitol Hill under the title Understanding Our Genetic Inheritance, the U.S. Human Genome Project, the first five years, 1991 to 95. Don't let the title fool you. The plan was for a 15-year study of the human genome to commence in 1991. On September 11th of that same year, President George H.W. Bush 
gave a speech at a rare appearance before a joint session of Congress to discuss the economy and the rising conflict in the Persian Gulf. On that auspicious occasion, Bush said this. I'm going to stop there.